particular person. So she likes the finer things in life, which I don't knock it. It is what it is. But she's, no, like this place. What do y'all think about this place? I like this place I a lot. It. Like, okay. I think nice. it's nice. Okay. Hey guys, and welcome to Little Blair, but you know what time it is. Talking to you guys about Married at First Sight, we're dealing with Gil um, and Miller. And I want to say this very, very clearly. When you're in a relationship, you have to cover your partner. You cannot expose them to the elements and the harsh world out there about their defaults. I say defaults about their weak points um, and their behaviors, which are you are that you are not agreeing with. Why? Because it paints a bad picture. Don't get it twisted. Gossiping Gill has got some smoke today, but so does Moaning Miller too. We'll deal with them both in this particular episode. Guys, if you are new to this channel, make sure you like it, you share, you subscribe, you click on that bell button for notification of the uploads. And for those of you who are returnees, you got the minerals, you got the minerals. All right, let's talk about it. Let's get into it. Let's break it all the way, uh, particularly down. All right, cool. Before we go any further, get a conversation flow and let's make sure we got the intro going, baby. Little black. You know what time it is. 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 All right, cool. So I think what we're seeing with Gil and Miller is really a clash of ethoses and ideas. Uh, Miller wants to live the lavish lifestyle. Uh, Gil is a bit more um, uh, low maintenance in that regard to her. And I think what we're seeing is this clash where she wants him to come up to this particular lifestyle so she can so she can feel comfortable. The trouble is he doesn't want to go up to that level. Um, and you know, as much as we may not like Mila for some of the moaning that she does, I mean, she has every right to want that level of a lifestyle. I think what people are a little bit frustrated by, and I think any relationship will be frustrated by, is the consistent moaning as if nothing is good enough for you. Now, albeit she did give some praise to the macaroons, the macaronis, the macarons, whatever it's called, a little cookie that's really expensive and extra and colorful, right? She gave some, she gave some high praise. And at that point in time, he actually bantered her. Um, and so I think, you know, what's starting to happen is Gil is starting to lose his patience for this woman. Um, and I, I, I don't want to jump down his throat too soon, but I, I, I think if you want to make a productive relationship, you're going to have to cut some of the jokes. I think we said this on a live the other night where we said, look, part of this is going to, it's going to come out as passive aggressive because what you're doing is you're making the jokes instead of telling her straight, you don't like what she's doing. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I would never want to be in this brother's position. Right. A woman like Mela for me would drive me up the freaking wall and I'd probably end up cussing her, but he has to find a way of communicating with her that he doesn't appreciate the way that she consistently complains and moans. He cannot say that in passing. He cannot keep saying that in, in, in jokes and, and saying it lightly because she won't hear what you're saying. She'll just hear somebody who keeps trying to take the mick out of her. And in that case, embarrassment will set in on her side or even feeling like she's been attacked on her side. That's going to make her want to attack you back. That's not going to provide a relationship, the safety that's required. He has to take a leaf out of her book and give her straight, right? He has to take a oh, got a little something right now. He has to give a leaf, a, a leaf, a leaf out of a book and give her a straight reading and say, "Hey, Mila, I'm going to be very honest with you. This particular behavior I'm seeing X, Y, and Z is not for me. The consistent complaints are driving me away from you. Now, if she decides that she can't be near you because she has to live a, a lavish lifestyle. Then we've got a completely different conversation. But at least you've let her know straight up, you're not with it." OK, because so far what we've seen is Gil hasn't done that and then has gone to the group to make, again, another passive kind of conversation where he slightly digs at his wife. Um, and, and again, it's going to add to the premise of what people are going to think towards Miller. I'm sure they really had their own opinions for another group, but you don't want to put her out just in case you've got to go back to her. It's that simple. If you if you're going back to that person and you out them the way you're out in them, Gil, in amongst the group, then guess what's going to happen? People are going to have negative things to say about her. And when you do want good advice, it's going to be too late because you've already soured the patches with negative information. What you say is so important. I think we said about this in dark arts. Information control is very important. 
We say this time and time again, what you say to the outside world is going to make sure that it's going to send a signal to the world in how they treat you and your partner or how they view you and they view your partner. And it's going to change the advice they're going to give. Because they can only give advice based on what you've given them information wise. So it's very important, very, very important uh, that uh, Gil learns how to not gossip in these arenas and waits for, if it was a man's chat, let's say, for instance, the men are having their chat, right? The men are going to talk about their wives. It's that simple. And they'll talk about the negative stuff. It's that simple. The women do the exact same thing too. Okay. Right. When the men are chatting, that's fine. But when you're doing it in mixed company, it's going to send off really bad signals. That's why Bao and Johnny, even Bao, even Johnny was like, whoa, I think that was a little bit private. I don't know if he should be sharing that. Johnny picked it up. This is something that wasn't meant for the group. There was some deeper stuff in there. Yes, she didn't turn up because she was working. And I think that was an excuse anyway. I, I, well, I shouldn't say an excuse. I mean, why would you want to, why, why are you working when you're uh, uh, coming on a honeymoon and you're going to meet the couples? Right? Surely this is a time to rest. This is exactly what we're talking about here. Right? If you can't even rest on your honeymoon now, how do you expect me to be able to, to, to how, how do you expect me to have a good impression of our relationship going forward in the future when you can't rest in these moments? These are the times to enjoy, soak up the sun. You can work when we get back. Or maybe they had an argument and she used that as an excuse as to why she's not coming down. It could have been. You know what I mean? It could have been. But either way, you've got to cover her in that moment, Gil, and not expose her to the rest of the group about, you know, uh, let me watch a little bit more of the clip and you see what I'm saying. That's what I said. If she was here, and I'm not putting words in her mouth, <laughs> this is a retirement home. This is an old folks home. So I think this was a little bit funny. So that part was not so bad. Um, but he, he, he went on a little bit further past this again. And I think, again, it was something that didn't need to be shared. He spoke about how Miller is very particular, da, 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 da. And again, it sounded like he wasn't happy. That's the issue. It sounded like he wasn't happy. It's not like he said, oh, Miller's particular, I'm particular. Um, and you know what? It's just, it's like, sometimes we war and I love it. He didn't say that. He said, M Miller's particular, right? In amongst his light tone, Miller's very particular. She wants things a particular way. And then made a very negative example. It's not showing her in a good light, even if you don't believe it to be true. And like I said, I think what we're seeing with him is that he's frustrated, he's annoyed. And you know, us men, we get to a certain point where we just can't handle anyone. Gil's a very lighthearted person. So I think what he's done is he's taken the negative energy he's receiving and turned it on his head and made it into a funny moment. But the problem is it seems passive aggressive. I don't think he necessarily is a passive aggressive person, but it's it's shown out as passive aggressive, the way that he's dealing with uh, uh, Mila and the jokes that he's making. I, I noticed that straight away. I said, oh, he's making some real heavy jokes up in here. He's going to have to stop and just tell her the truth. You're not feeling it. Right. And what that does is it ruins moments. Right. It ruins the moment. It, what he did in the bed was fantastic. Later on, when she was talking, he said, listen, all right, cool. I hear what you're saying. Let's go to bed. Just end it. Boom. Right. Very direct. She likes direct and, and say it to her. Now, Gil might not be the person that likes to be direct. So this relationship might not work. Because he doesn't seem like the person that's going to be doing direct, 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 direct all the time. I don't think he wants to be doing that. Then again, it's early, it's early doors, and maybe he wants to, you know, save some of that for a more appropriate time he feels. And maybe it's not here he wants to address those kind of things or go so hard or go so direct. Um, but but your but your wife is starting to grain up grain on you, bro. You know, you don't want to wait to it. If you're in a relationship, you don't want to wait for everything to pile on. If there's something you didn't like, like Miller's, like Miller has done already, she's already set the tone. When she's complaining about everything, that means there's an open season for letting people know, hey, I don't like this. You can still do it respectfully, but do it direct. You can still do it respectfully, but do it direct. Um, let's move on to, uh, to, on to Mila now as well, because I think, again, we've seen this episode, it's like we're saying it over again and again and again. She's a Debbie Downer. She's a Merle, Mer, uh, Merle, Merle, Merle Mona. I mean, fam, like after a while, you're going to be you're going to be worn down. It's not everything you've got to complain about, Mila. See, uh, someone might say I can trust because you. Uh, someone might say I can trust. Gil even said himself he can trust her because he knows she's going to say what's on her mind. Guess what? It gets tiring after a while because you're not meant to say everything that's on your mind. That's the whole point. You're not supposed to say everything that's on your mind if you want a relationship to work. 
<coughs> there has to be restraint on your tongue and there has to be restraint on your words because your words have life. There's life and death in your tongue. So you've got to be able to hold your tongue sometimes. Sometimes you don't agree. Sometimes you don't like what's going on. You shut it and you hold it because it's not every day you have to bring a negative comment. Now, I'm sure the show could have probably showed more clips of her moaning, but it showed enough. OK, she's been moaning since episode one. We're now episode five on your honeymoon and you're still mourning. If it's not the beach, if it's not the almond milk, if it's not uh, 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 the retirement home, like everything seems to be a moan. Rather than really just sapping it up and lapping it up and enjoying the atmosphere with the person that you're with. Right. We can moan about this after we get off the, the resort. Right. Or at least make it light. You've already said the, the deepness. Make it light. Make it a joke into a banter. But it doesn't seem to be that case for me. Like it seems to be uh, acting bougie and not just a bougie. I'm above this. Now, you may be. But you're showing no humility at this moment. And that in itself is not endearing. That in itself is not attractive. That in itself is not something that people want to see. Yeah, it's going to great on Gil. And I actually feel for Gil. I actually do. Yeah, I, I feel for him because it's not going to allow me to get close to you and build that intimacy because everything you're going to moan. Are you going to moan about how I get close to you? You're going to moan about how I hug you? You're going to moan. When are you not going to moan? When are you not going to moan, Miller? That's the key question. When are you not going to moan? When are you not going to complain about something not being the way that you want it? Like I said, because Gil is an easygoing kind of person. And when you are going with somebody who wants to consistently moan about everything, it's almost like you flowing and them stopping you. You flowing and them stopping you. You flowing and them stopping you. After a while, that is going to be hard press. Right. What I think needs to happen is a real conversation. Gil needs to sit her down, let her know. Listen, I appreciate like the final things in life. What I'm going to say is I'm not appreciating your attitude right now. It's not helping us build intimacy. You know, and the fact that she hasn't kissed him, too. As she has every right not to have kissed him early. She wants to get to know him and get to know the mind. I'm with that. You know what I mean? But I think it is compounded. It's compounded by the moaning, and it seems like she does not like him. Seems like. And it's almost quite it's quite similar to the Miles and Karen situation with the whole intimacy situation, right? Because Miller doesn't want to kiss uh, Gil so far. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna press her to have kissed him straight away, you know what I mean? Because I understand, you know, it's a journey and a process. And you don't know this person just yet. But I think it 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 fits into her narrative of being able to control. Uh, been, been, been a little bit controlling and I, I, Not towards him But wanting to control herself And wanting to have a say so in every single thing Right, and being very particular In every single thing Right, so I don't know when the moment Will come where she'll feel comfortable to kiss him I don't think she'll ever get there Because I think the money situation will be a problem Just like the bracelet situation where you said I can get your Cartier bracelet And she got excited versus the quilt situation She was like, not excited Money can't be your love language no, It's not Right. It's it's a part of our fears and a part of what we hope for. But it's not your love language. When we deal with love language, money isn't the key thing here. It's not the principal thing. It may make you feel comfortable, may make you feel better. But money isn't the principal thing when it comes to love. Money, uh, money answers of all things, but it doesn't answer to love. I'm not saying that you don't need it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have it in love. And I'm not saying you can't. I'm not saying that love is enough to pay the bills. I'm not saying that. At all. But what I am saying is that when we talk about love languages, we're dealing with actions, we're dealing with commitment, we're, co we're dealing with faithfulness, we're, we're dealing with truth in those areas, right? Um, and so gifts, when your gifts have to be a certain expense as a love language, I start questioning whether that really is your love language. Yeah. Because it requires finances. In, in It requires money in all costs. Rather than actually being about the person's heart, their time, their energy, their involvement. So I'm going to leave it there. I think Mill and Gil, Mill, Mill and Gil <laughs> they're going to head to a very fiery grave really, really quickly. Um, and I think this will get old really, really quickly in a few weeks' time as well when they get back. 
Um, so yeah, guys, let us know your thoughts down below. Uh, comment, like, share, subscribe. Click on that bell button for notification to upload. We appreciate you guys. Stay locked, stay loaded, and we will see you guys soon. Little black, you know what time it is.